Hello, folks. This is Classic Boxing and MMA coming back at you. And this video is about Do you think Canelo Alvarez is afraid of Jamal Charlo? I personally think that Charlo would have to up his game more than what he's doing now if he wants to beat um, Canelo Alvarez. Because if that fight, let's say, is 7-5 uh, in favor of Charlo, they're going to give it to Canelo. Canelo is the goose that laid the golden egg for WBC. And they're not going to risk that virtual money printing machine known as Canelo Alvarez just to, just to let a guy like uh, Jamal Charlo, Charlo take the so-called franchise belt from him. Uh, from him. Now let's look at that. I have never seen such fuckery in boxing in all my years of watching the sport. I started watching boxing, well, let's say, when Ali fought Foreman. Uh, well, actually, about 1970, when I was five years old, six years old, my grandfather and father saw the first Frazier Ali fight. And I was there. But I don't remember, I, all I remember was them commenting on it. and. And my grandfather still calling Ali Clack Cassius Clay. And they asked me, do I like the boxing? I said, no. I didn't know it was boring to me then. Then, about four years later, Ali fought Foreman. And they had a thing, I think you call it closed circuit. And so I didn't see it. But I had heard when, when Ali knocked Foreman out, and I was happy about that. And so was my cousin who pretty much was raised like my brother because he lived with us um, in large swaths of time, large swaths of, large swaths of the time he was living with us. And I was glad of that, that Ali be for me. But I didn't really start watching boxing until about 1976, 1976 Olympics with Sugar Ray Leonard and other Olympic um, greats. Reason being was because I was getting in fights in school. See, I was larger than everybody. Um, by the time I was 12, I was six foot tall. And they used to call me some very derogatory names to me because all I did was read comic books and I had these black glasses. I was I was a nerd. And I went to school with a, with a rough uh, African American project called Garden Valley in Cleveland, Ohio. So somehow I got denerded. Uh, I started getting fights in school. They kept picking with me, picking with me. And I found out I could fight, which I, I kind of knew anyway before that because I had beat up my cousin and, and our best friend because they both tried to jump me. And I beat them up like 1972. I was like seven, eight. So, 
But now, things are tough with that boys. A lot of us were, were at that time, as young as we were in elementary school, they were going back and forth to detention homes, reform school and such. And I pretty much whooped everybody's ass who got in my face, who I had to fight. Even the toughest guy in the school, we had a multiplicity of fights then. I think he won one or two, and I won about four. The last time I beat him up so bad, well, anyway. I'll make a little video about a fight he and I had, where he hit me so hard, I felt my teeth loosen. They were loose in my in my head, and and they they tightened back up after a while. Uh, he tried to gouge my eye out. We were still in the fourth grade, so fourth grade. But I never quit. I stood my ground. And I put all kinds of firepower on him. I was much taller, but he was short, stocky, stocky. He wasn't short, but he was shorter than me and stocky. As a matter of fact, he looked like a Mike Tyson. Even his eyebrows were stocky. He was so tough, he used to beat up his older brother. But let's skip that. That's, 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 I'm digressing on that. <clears throat> so. The first time I noticed that Canelo might be, um, might be, uh, ducking Charlo, Devore Charlo was, Charlo became his mandatory at 154, I think, and Canelo ran up to middleweight. So I'm like, mm -hmm. that's interesting. He ran up to middleweight and fought a nobody called Rocky Fielding, which a lot of people call Rocky Fieldhand. Then Canelo, at 160, uh, was supposed to fight Charlo again as the number one, the number one contender. And what and what happened? Instead of fight Canelo, I mean instead of fight Charlo. Let him fight Charlo. The WBC gave Canelo a fake, a fall belt called the franchise, <laughs> the French, excuse me, the franchise belt. Now we know that's bullshit. I have never seen the WBC, WBA, and I think this is, uh, those organizations were the, were the two I knew, and then the IBF came a little bit later, in, I think in the eighties. But I had never, I never seen any of them organizations go to such length to stay in the good graces of one of their fighters. Because this fighter, Canelo Alvarez, is probably making them more money than anyone has in a very long time. So, instead of stripping well, actually, they did strip Canelo of the belt. That's stripping him of the belt because he was a WBC middleweight champion. They say stripped, and so now they took the belt and put it around Jamal Charlo's waist. And to save, to keep Canelo from totally leaving WBC, so they can keep um, keep uh, collecting the tax money. Uh, Canelo makes, I think, thirty million dollars a fight now. So you can imagine how lucrative that fee money is to the WBC. So instead of uh, risking letting Canelo slip through their hands and letting all that, all that large, uh, all those large fees slip through their hands, they made up, create a made-up belt, the franchise belt, and put it around uh, Cane Alvarez Canelo's waist. I have never seen such bullshit in my entire life. Just make that guy fight. Make him fight the number one contender. You've been after him to fight Charlo for what two years, and if he don't don't fight him, just strip his ass and then send him a packing. And if the WBC, the, the IBF, the WBA all get together and make that commitment that they're not going to let 
anyone, stop anyone, then the person will have uh, the person will have no choice but to fight, but to fight. But no one wants to stand up. Uh, no one wants to um, to risk losing that fee money. So they're all and they're not going to do anything. The one that that the the one organization that um, that has the opponent as the number one contender is not going to stand up and lose uh, someone making that much money and can pay them that much big fees. So let me know what you all think about it. I think it's bullshit, but let me know what you think about it. Peace.